In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can get empowered around making money, spending money, and saving money. And before we get started, I have to say welcome back to those of you who've subscribed to this awesome community of artistic entrepreneurs who get a tool, tip, or mindset shift from me every single Tuesday. So if you're someone watching this video who hasn't subscribed, just click that subscribe button and notification bell and make yourself at home. As a professional life coach to performers, creatives, and artists from all over the world, money is a huge part of the work that we do. The advice out there telling you to just track your expenses and follow your budget can mean nothing without an empowered mindset and the right structures in place. What we're gonna talk about today are grounds for some of the biggest breakthroughs I've had with clients and in my own personal life. So I'm gonna take you through five of the most common stories that I encounter that hold people back in their financial lives and give you a starting place for your breakthrough today. And be sure to watch to the very end for my best tips on maximizing your budget and for a special offer for you. Now let's dive in. Story number one. I'm ashamed that my art can't pay my bills because that means I'm not successful enough. Many clients of mine have an ultimate goal of earning a living just from their art, which is a fantastic goal. The problem, however, lies in what they make it mean when they aren't earning their whole living from their art. For some people, setting that as the standard without stepping stones to get to that ultimate goal of earning all of your money from one place, we can set our mindsets up for failure. One example of how that happens is if we cut the cord too early from another job or a side hustle or whatever you're doing to complement your earnings. If you cut that too early and depend solely on the earnings that you make from that craft, then it adds a completely unnecessary pressure to your art. By making this source of expression and creativity and beauty something that also has to pay all of your bills, at too early a point can be the root of some pretty severe burnout. It affects your well-being, it affects your creativity, and it affects your ability to authentically express through that art. Because then it becomes something to serve a purpose, to earn that next paycheck, to sell that next piece. For those of you stuck in this story where it's either black or white, I can only be successful if I'm earning my money from my craft, I encourage you to pick up the book Big Magic. This was a really important book for me at an early stage in my career because it encouraged me to give myself permission to let go of that standard of success. I'm not saying that you won't ever earn your whole living from your craft, but you may not start there, or you may not be there right now. For tips on finding a great side job that aligns with and supports your artistic pursuits, watch my last video that walks you through the three easy steps to identify how to find the best side hustle for you. And for those of you who feel a lot of shame even just considering having a side hustle or a day job, I really, really strongly encourage you to pick up that book, Big Magic. It'll make a big difference. Story number two, I don't know what else I would do. People who are stuck in this story create a lot of fear and scarcity around their needs and their skills. What I mean by that is sometimes these people will convince themselves that they don't need that much money to live off of. They'll keep a tight budget and restrict their lifestyle severely. And what also shows up is that they convince themselves that this is the only thing that they're good at or trained in, so that's all they can do. Now I totally get that this is your passion and your art and your craft and it means more to you than any other day job or side hustle might provide. But when you live in this story that this is the only thing you know and this is the only thing you can do and restrict your budget because of that, what ends up happening is you actually start impacting the opportunities that come your way or that you're able to pursue. Maybe you limit how many applications you send out and the fees associated with that. Maybe you can't say yes to a competition because the travel fees are too high. Maybe you don't take as many lessons or coachings as would support you at this point in your career. Maybe you don't pursue specialized work like Reiki sessions, energy work, body work, yoga classes, chiropractic care, Alexander technique, or any number of other things that are just layers of support for you and your well-being and your career that financial freedom and flexibility would afford you. If you took this story out of your way, this could be access to a totally different level of your career. So ultimately, the side job would help you grow your artistic career. So again, my tip for you in this mindset is to go watch my previous video on the best side job for you as a musician, artist, writer, or creative in this world. Story number three, it'll take time away from my art. 
This story is coming from a scarcity mindset around time. Many people associate more time with more productivity in their artistic pursuits, which in some cases may be true, but in others, more time doesn't necessarily mean more progress or more production. If you're in this story, you may want to look at two different places. One, is your side job something that's actually supporting you and your needs? Meaning, if you know your most productive time for practicing or for painting or for just accessing your creativity is from 2 to 4 p.m. every day, then it's your responsibility to find a job that complements that, that allows you that freedom to work in the morning and or evening so that you have that concentrated time just for you and your art. So again, consider watching the video that I made last week on deciding what you want your life to actually look like and crafting your life from that place. The other thing to consider might be your relationship with time, which I would encourage you to pick up the book called The Practicing Mind. This book specifically debunks the idea that you need more time to accomplish more. You could practice for 30 minutes a day and accomplish more than someone who practices four hours a day because of the level of focus that you bring. Again, we come back to how mindset impacts the actual result. Story number four, I'm not good with money or I'm not good at budgeting. If this is a story that you've encountered in your own mindset, then that probably is something that shows up in a lot of other places for you, where you limit and undervalue the skills that you already have. So part of your legwork will be busting up these myths through self-love and self-worth. And alongside that, create a structure that actually engages you in a different way. There are tons of ways to make budgets, right? In fact, I invite every single person watching this video to comment below, how do you track your budget? I bet we'll come up with things everywhere from an app or mint.com or Intuit with the self-employed QuickBooks. Heck, there might even be someone out there still balancing their checkbook. But there are hundreds and hundreds of other ways that you can track money going in and out of your life. One simple way could be literally like a kindergartner's approach where we take a piece of paper or a poster board Put it on your wall next to your bed or next to your mirror or somewhere that you look at every day and you use bright, colorful markers to track money that comes into your bank account and money that goes out. The goal is to have them either even or have money coming in more. Budgeting is not that complicated. You don't have to have every single itemized list on a Google spreadsheet to know what's going on in your budget. Another way that I've seen that's really creative is actually using that marble system. Maybe you used to use this as a kid where every time you had good behavior, your mom would put a marble in the good jar and it had bad behavior, you'd take the marble and put it back in the original jar. And once you got to a certain number of marbles, you earned a treat or a special surprise. Same thing can be with money. Maybe a marble equals $10 or $100, depending on what money you're looking at for your budget every week or month. And maybe your goal is to accumulate a certain number of marbles in the savings jar where once you hit your goal, you treat yourself to a delicious reward. You could even use this kind of system for tracking weekly spending, where you start with a certain number of marbles in this jar that is money in your account, and you don't spend any more money than the marbles in that jar. So every time you spend $10, you take a marble and put it in the other jar. It really is this simple, folks. One last example of getting creative with your budget is making a bet with a friend. See who can save a higher percentage of their income every month or spend less of their income every month. And whoever loses has to give the other person a massage and a manicure or whatever sort of free prize excites you. So the goal in this one is simply keep it simple, have fun, and get creative. Think outside the box for ways that you feel engaged and connected to your bank account. And story number five, I feel like I can't have fun and save money at the same time. If you're someone who generally sticks to your budget on a day-to-day -day basis, but then on the weekends, just throw caution to the wind and spend a little bit too much money going out for drinks or dinner or any activities with your friends, then here's my challenge to you. I would invite you to come up with a list of 20 plus activities or fun things that you could do with your friends or family that cost virtually nothing. The goal of saving is never to diminish or restrict your life. Like I said at the top of this video, the goal is not to convince you that you don't need these things in your life. Everybody needs fun. So if this is an area that you see that you could cut down on costs and bump up the creativity, then consider things like hosting potlucks, having movie night with your friends at home, hosting game night, hosting brunches, going to the park for a doggy date or a kid play date, 
arts and crafts, going on hikes for a little nature walk, or maybe exploring the city close to you. By simply having fun and getting creative with the way that you have fun and get creative, it makes you feel really empowered to be saving that money and putting it towards either your savings or emergency funds or your retirement funds, or maybe even investing it back into your art. Whatever you do with that money, it will be immensely fulfilling and satisfying to create this win-win in your life. My hope is that you got some value out of this video if one or more of those five stories shows up in your life, but I also have a couple offers for you. One is to go into the description box below and download my free guide to mastering money management. I've had a lot of success in my life with figuring out the budget that works best for me to add to my savings account every month, to add to my retirement every month, and to still live the lifestyle that I want. I realize I picked up a lot of tips and tricks along the way, so I wanted to give you an overall structure to how you can budget your life and give you an example of how I've done it in my life. So go to the link below and download it today. And my second invitation to you is to hop on the phone with me. In the Calendly link I've included in the description box, I have options for you to sign up with a 60 minute sample session or 30 minute strategy session. If you're not sure how to generate your own breakthrough in your mindset or the structure that works best for you, then I'm totally down to partner with you at no charge for one of those calls. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And I'd love to see you again next Tuesday. Have an awesome rest of your week and I'll see you again soon. Bye guys.